Hey Battle Bays, welcome back to another video. It's me, Andrea, and this is my first upload of 2024. This is my first upload of the brand new year, and I am so happy to be here. I hope you guys had a wonderful new year. I hope you bought it in just the way you felt like you wanted to bring it in, the way you imagined it in your mind. I hope that happened for you. Me personally, no, not really. I mean, my kids, and my husband's still in here. So, you know, I was just in the house watching a comic got killed and eating some butter toast. Next year, hopefully I bring it in with a little bit more of a bang. But I think with all of the excitement that I feel like I've had this year, I think bringing in the new year in silence, peaceful, not doing too much. I think that was, I think that worked for me. I think that's what I needed. Regardless of how I bought the new year in, this is still a brand new fresh year. What does that mean? This is a brand new fresh start for absolutely everybody. Even though you don't need a new year to start over, to start that new diet, to go back to school, to go back to the gym, you don't need a new year. All you need is a brand new moment. Blink, look, there's a new moment. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's another one. That's all you need. And even with that being said, it is still a brand new year and I'm feeling powerful i'm feeling powerful i started this little journey that i'm on a few months back and i just want to carry this over into the new year so if you could probably tell by the title of this video i'm going to be talking to you guys about some of the goals that i have for myself in a few different categories going into this brand new fantastic year i don't want to rant too much but if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. One of my goals this year has to do with that. And also like this video if you find it helpful or if you just find it interesting. I also want to start off by saying me and my husband already came to the conclusion that we don't plan on doing anything. Like we don't have any plans or any goals to be absolutely fantastical this year, okay? We just, we barely, y'all, we just finished surviving 2022. 2023 and i'm just hoping for some peace and quiet in 2024 i'm just hoping for some smooth sailing just some 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 wins here and there like a wins that's i think that's what i'm trying to say i'm just hoping for some wins okay in 2024 just i'm sick of i'm sick of struggle living i'm sick of struggle love struggle finances str i'm just sick of struggle and i'm just ready to take a break and just start growing again. Everything was knocked over and demolished. We all came back. We are phoenixes coming from the dust. And now this is the year that we start building that foundation back. So this is a foundational year for me and my family. I'm not sure about you guys, but that's kind of what my goals are built upon. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have, yeah, I'm sweating. Jeez, I'm so sweaty. Why am I nervous right now? <laughs> It could be I feel like if I don't accomplish some of these goals by the end of the year, I'm going to feel like a failure, but it's okay. I'll cross that bridge when we get there. Let's start. So I have my phone here because I put all of my goals here in my notes app, just like I do all my to-do list and everything. That way, if I feel like I'm lost or I kind of lost my way, I can just go ahead and open my phone and get myself back on track. So for my 2024 goals, we're going to go ahead and start off with my career goals. So my first goal is to get med boarded out of the army with a hundred percent now i only put that because you guys i'm actually in the med board process your girl didn't make it she 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 didn't make it to the 20 years and a part of me still feels like i failed a part of me still feels like a bit disappointed but this is for the best um secretly y'all i want a ponytail i want a ponytail holder Secretly, um, over the past about two years, I have fought off two med boards and now it's just to the point where I'm just like, okay, maybe this is a blessing in disguise. God obviously have other plans for me on top of the fact that I have already been feeling unfulfilled for the past few years in my career as it is. So maybe this is just God giving me an open door. He's opening the door for me. And so I just said, you know what? I'm just gonna take it and let it ride. But now that I am in a process, obviously I'm gonna strive for the best. I'm gonna strive for the greatest and I'm hoping for 100%. Permanent and total, <laughs> God willing. But that is one of my goals is to get mid boarded out of the army 100%. I'll probably talk about that a little bit more 
in future videos and future vlogs and stuff like that but i definitely don't plan on going into like any just know i'm not going to turn into a va or getting out of the army med board whatever guru that's just not going to happen because i still feel like why like what what is my life supposed to look like after the army type of thing like this isn't something that i necessarily want to do but for my health and for my family and for me to continue to exist on this earth it's for the best so my second career goal is to get my rrt so guys i have my crt if you've watched my past vlogs okay let's back up for a second i am an lpn and i'm also a respiratory therapist so there's that i got my lpn license like um three years ago at this point and i just recently graduated last this past may i just recently graduated from the rt program and over the past month i just finally passed the tmc and i have my crt so i'm a certified respiratory therapist on top of being an lpn but i want my rrt i want to be a registered respiratory therapist because i want travel opportunities and what i'm noticing is when it comes to a lot of the travel contracts for respiratory therapists they want registered respiratory therapists so I plan on getting my RRT. I already booked my next test. It's gonna be in March and I put it in March because I want a few months that I can go ahead and study and really like get these formulas. Cause again, if you watch my past vlogs, you know the formulas have been kicking my ass. But yes, that is my goal is to get my RRT this year. My third goal for my career goals is I want to find three solid agencies to work for as an LPN and as an RT, R, RT, whatever. So um, I have an agency that I work for on the side when I was only an LPN. And it was working out for the most part. I was making some decent money on top of being in the army. It was crazy. Like I was making so much money. I was making an extra three to $5,000 a month just by working, <clears throat> excuse me, I need some water. Where's my water bottle? Jeez, I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> Throw it all dry. Mm. All right, where was I at? So I was talking about the agency that I worked for. So I worked for an agency when I was working as an LPN. And when I was working for this agency, I was making pretty decent money to be a new LPN at that. The way my schedule would work, I would work Monday through Friday with the army. Obviously I'm active duty. And then on the weekends, is that straight guys? Don't let me be crooked. On the weekends is when I would take advantage of my free time and I would work a second job. So depending on how early we got off on Friday, I would work a late shift. So 7 to 11 or something like that. And then on Saturday and Sunday, I would work um, I would work 12 hour shifts, sometimes 16 hours, depending on what pops up on the app once I was done with whatever shift I had. But I'm telling you, I was a work, I was working like a dog. It was crazy because I was addicted to how much money I was making. Throughout the month, if I was able to work all three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for each of those weeks, that's a little over $5,000. Now, if I was able to work just a Saturday and a Sunday for a whole month, then that was about $3,000, but that's still on top of my military pay, y'all. It was crazy. It was crazy. So I'm looking for opportunities like that again. Hopefully I'm wanting to start while I'm still in just so I can kind of get that transitional period out of the way. And that's kind of what I plan on carrying with me once I get out and once I get until I get back into school and stuff like that. And my fourth career goal. So that kind of ties into the last one because I only want to work three days a week. Call me lazy, call me what you want, but I only want to work three 12s out of the week and I would prefer to be working with a PRN agency so I can choose the days that I want to work. i rather work um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, one week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday the following week and kind of alternate that way, but I'm still working it out. I'm still working it out, but again, I only want to work three days a week and that's honestly why I'm looking for the three solid agencies. That way, if this agency don't have anything available, this agency has something available. And if I can't work as an LPN with this agency because or with these agencies because they don't have anything available, I'll just go over and I'll work these with RT because they have something available type of things. So I just want to make sure I have options either way I turn. So 
those are my career goals for 2024 just honestly basically transitioning i feel like a lot of these goals are based around me transitioning from the military next is my social media goals yes guys i have social media goals call it cringy call it corny whatever i don't care it is what it is um for the longest time i was making quite a bit when i was doing instagram y'all remember when instagram started paying you to post reels and i started pumping out reels like crazy i will honestly say that's probably why my instagram ended up growing so big so fast at that time because i was like oh whoa 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 <laughs> y'all paying me it was a, it was one day i had got a random um they had said to set up the finances and stuff like that cool and i did it i'm like oh wait what they gonna give me i'm thinking like a few dollars here a few dollars there because that's what i get from youtube every so often girl no 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 y'all they dropped over 500 dollars into my account and i was literally up all night doing doing reels and this and that and y'all it was crazy it was crazy and it got to the point I was making about $1,500 a month just from posting reels. So that's why back then I was posting and posting and posting and posting. And honestly, my content was very controversial at the time because my thought process was I want to piss off the men. Because if I can piss off the men, I'm going to get the views. So, and it, it, it works. My The more controversial you can make a post and the more chatter you can have like if you can get people arguing with each other in your comment section you've done something right you've done something right and that's where i was getting all the views from is every time a man hop on my stuff it, in, it incites anger in them or wanting to fix me or tell me about themselves and all of a sudden everybody else is coming boom 1500 a month so even though they're not paying anymore which instagram come on now seriously you had how do you take away paying your content creators to post reels and then in turn tell them oh but if you want this blue little check you you got to pay us for it forget you in that check my social media goals so for youtube my social media goal is to hit 10k subscribers before the end of the year so if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed already can you please please, please, please subscribe because I'm really wanting to hit that goal since I stopped really making military content. My growth has slowed down a little bit. I'm in a transitional period, guys. But yes, that's my goal is 10K subscribers by the end of the year. Instagram, now this is where I was getting a little ahead of myself because I put 100K on Instagram and more of a female audience. Now, the more of a female, the more of a female audience. That's the realistic part. I think that part is very realistic because it's already been happening. I hate it. I hate it. And for the longest time, I really didn't care. I wasn't really that serious. Like after I stopped getting paid, I really wasn't that serious on Instagram because I have all these men that don't even want to see me post anyway. So why do I care about it? So what I did is when I I started posting more more uplifting female friendly things like things that i would want to see if i was a female on social media so i started posting stuff like that and so far it's working y'all i'm ashamed to say my audience on instagram was about 90 percent men the rest of that was women i checked my let me see actually because I, I check it quite often because I really I'm I really want a more female audience. I want to be more of a female presence. And as of right now, I'm at an 85% men to 14%, which is crazy because it used to be like around 3%. And so in the last few months with just posting the stuff that I've been posting with me and my husband and my RT stuff and just other little things like that. I've gotten up to 14%. So I'm happy about that. So if you are a female and you want to support me on a gram, please go and do that. You are welcomed. You are very, very welcomed in my space. Um, More consistency. So I do want to post more consistencies across all of my platforms. Even though like TikTok is more so like for play play, I'm trying to do a little something over there. Instagram as well. I felt like for the longest time I had that more like for play play. I do not know what it is that I'm that I'm going for. So I'm trying to figure that whole thing out too. And that goes into my fourth goal for this and that's to find my aesthetic for all my platforms because I just be posting stuff. Like what I I'm trying to find my 
I don't want to say niche because I don't want to necessarily niche down, but that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find my niche. Like, what is it about my content that would keep people coming back? Or if somebody wanted to, like, what would people come to me for is what I'm trying to narrow down. All right, so for my next category of goals, financial goals. Y'all, finances. Finances have been one of those things that year after year after year, it just knocks me off my motherfucking feet. Just knocks me straight on my shoulder blades because why can't I seem to get my finances in order and keep them in order? I do not know. And this is me being very, very transparent and vulnerable with you guys. But your girl been broke. Not broke where I can't like pay my bills or I can't put gas in my car, I can't eat. But as far as having money at the end of my bills to do the things that I would like to do, where is it? I'm really trying to figure out. I did just do a little deep dive into like what the issue is. And honestly, it's coming here. The army is just not paying me enough. It, it, it just isn't. And with my current lifestyle, with my husband being there and my kid, my daughter being here, my son being there, our son being here and, and I'm here and we just have all of these different households we have to maintain, right? And not, not, not that I have to maintain the households my kids are at, but those are my children. And it is so much to ask somebody, hey, go ahead and take my kids. I'm not going to help you with anything financial wise but you got it right no that's unrealistic so i do send quite some quite a lot to my my family who currently has my daughter quite a lot to my son's dad who currently has obviously my son and i still have to maintain my household here on top of trying to build this how this household and turn it into a home that way when they return they're returning to a home on top of that my husband has a whole different apartment out at the base he's stationed at, paying bills and stuff over there. I, ha I have Sam here, he has Yusuke there. It's just, it's a lot. We just got the new truck and I still have the car and we have the phones and we have we have bills and stuff that we have to pay. So obviously BH fluctuates, right? So coming from Fort Sam out in Texas and moving here, obviously that lowers the pay with all of the different things that we just have going on the army page is not conducive to this type of lifestyle and we can't keep up and it's crazy because even though we're throwing all this money it's like we can't catch up you get what i'm saying so that's just been stressful so my financial goals for this year saving ten thousand dollars <sighs> i'm looking at the numbers i don't know how realistic that is i don't even know how i came up with that number but actually yes i do Yes, I do. So I used to have two different bank bank accounts, um, Navy Federal and USAA. I primarily I primarily use my USAA and my Navy Federal was just there if I needed it. When it comes to Sam's being weird again. When it comes to my Navy Federal account, I always kept about ten thousand dollars in that account. Y'all, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. And I always, and 10,000 is a number, and I know it's very specific, but let me tell you where I got that number from. When I was going through this crisis, way back when, when I was in Fort Stewart, and I, um, this, this is a very, I, I went through a crisis where I almost hurt myself, and I had to leave the situation that I was in in a hurry, and I went to find somebody to talk to. I didn't like the what, what my mind was doing to me. I went to talk to someone and I went to a completely different brigade. Long story, but I ended up walking through the second brigade building of, over at Fort Stewart and I ended up running into, um, it's a lady, her name at the time, Master Sergeant Branch. I'm gonna always remember her name because she saved my life and she don't even know it. She probably retired at this point, but I remember I was, I, I bust in and I'm like, I, I, I'm specialist Starks. I, I'm, I need help. I don't trust anybody in my unit. I just need somebody to talk to. Cause at first she was looking at me like, can I help you? <laughs> and then after I said that, she's like, come in, sit, sit down, calm, let's breathe. Y'all, I ended up talking to this lady for like hours. 
I was talking to this lady for hours and she was talking to me about everything. It was, it was crazy. And so when I kind of got to, she was, we were talking about the things that was stressing me, the things that was stressing her. Like you would think we were friends the way we were talking. And when I told her about like my finances, cause this was an issue back then too. She, she said, um, I don't know. I was just really impressed by her. And on top of that, she was a black woman. So I was just really impressed and inspired and motivated by her. So when she said, she's like, honey, look, I own three properties. She's like, I drive a Benz. And she's like, when my account drops below 10%, 10, what she say? She's like, and when my account dropped below 10,000 is when I start itching a little bit. So from here on out, from that point up until this point in my head, I'm like, no, 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 no. I need to have 10,000 in my account and I don't need to let it drop below 10,000. So that has been what I've been doing up until this point. I don't know what in the world 2022 and 2023 has done to me and the beating I, t like what did I do to deserve the stuff that I had to go through in 2022 and 2023, it blows my mind. Like I, I was barely hanging on y'all. I was barely hanging on anyway. <laughs> that's why that's the story behind why I, it just makes me feel obviously it's not the numbers, just like followers on social media and, and subscribers and stuff. It's not about that, but it's just where my goals, my personal goals and where I like to see myself. My next is paying off my credit card. Y'all, I'm honestly thinking. <laughs> because at the beginning of this year, my credit cards are paid off. They were paid off. But like I said, it ain't enough money left after the bills. So obviously you start putting more money on those damn credit cards again. This time, I am determined to pay these things off and cut them cards up. Actually, should I just close them? But then it's going to mess up my credit score. Like... No, I just need to be more disciplined is what I need to do. Take accountability, Andrea, gosh. Yes, but I'll cross that bridge when I get there. But one of my goals is to pay off my credit card. I'm sorry, y'all, because it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. I know. I'm working on it. That's what I'm working on this year, though. I promise. Scout's honor. Um, My next goal is to repair my credit. So closing those credit cards would defeat that. Gosh. But I am working on um, repairing my credit. It's so crazy because there's not much that's on my credit. If like it looking at like my budget and stuff, I don't have a lot of debt. Like I have my car. I still have my house, but that's rented out. I'm, you know, make I'm cash flowing on the house. So that's fine. Like it's, as far as things to pay off my car, my credit cards, a truck. Maybe his credit. Yeah, his credit cards. But that's not a lot like the numbers ain't a lot the numbers ain't a lot and that's why it blows my mind that we just don't have it at the end of the bills that's <sighs> maybe once he gets here things will be better because we have so many bills spread out in so many different places and i feel like that's what the problem is so yeah paying rent in two different places is not fun it's not fun i want to upgrade my car and hear me out I have a perfectly working car. So if I'm not able to make this goal happen, it is what it is. But I want to, I wanted to upgrade my car before Trey got here because with the SCRA and the way it works in Louisiana is different. So even if I go to the lot and I go and get a car with 18% interest rate, it's fine. It's fine while he's in Louisiana right now, because then I can literally turn right around and say, Hey, I want to, um, I want to, I want the protections under SCRA with the Louisiana prevent pro provision and it'll be lowered to 3%. That's why I have a 3% on my car right now. So because I want a car that just have more in it, um, that's a little bit more powerful, a little bit more space. I'm thinking that would be beneficial in the long run rather than having him come here and then we just be stuck with the higher interest rate. So I'm looking into that now. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what comes of that. But again, that's a possibly. If I don't make it happen, I don't make it happen again. My car is perfectly fine. But if I can go ahead and upgrade and get that lower percent, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And then my last financial goal is doing the 100 envelope challenge. Y'all, I've always wanted to do this challenge. 
and I've had the envelopes that I'm going to be doing the challenge this year with for so long. Like two years, maybe three. I've had these envelopes <laughs> trying to do the damn challenge. But every time something comes up at the beginning of the year where I'm just like, it's just not a good idea right now. It's just, it's just not the time. No, I want to do my envelope freaking challenge and I'm doing it this time. It's happening. We're doing it. We are doing the envelope challenge, okay? Hold me accountable. Hold me accountable. My educational goals for 2024, get accepted into nursing school. Y'all, okay, I have four. So I'm gonna do the first two. Get accepted into nursing school and nail down what I actually want to do in the first place. Those are my first two goals. I say get accepted into nursing school because I'm still torn between what it is that I wanna do. And let me go ahead and run this by you guys because maybe y'all can help me. Um, I wanted to go to school to be a CRNA. That's the only reason why I was getting my RN is because I need that step to, to get to the end of that goal, right? To, you know, do the things that I need to do, get some ICU time, get into CRNA school. And uh, that's so doable and it's so crazy because I've already submitted two of my nursing applications. I'm now, it's just a waiting game and see if I even get, get accepted into one of the programs. But recently I was doing some research, y'all. My lips dry, hold on. Okay, let me back up. Let me tell you guys why I'm so torn now. First of all, I am a respiratory therapist. I work in a pulmonary cardio um, cardio department. Like that, that those that's what I do, right? Being an RT, I love being an RT so much more than I like being a nurse. I just like it. I, 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 there's, there's similarities and there's a lot of differences, but as far as my fulfillment and the things that I wanted out of my healthcare career, I just get that out of RT. I love running down to the traumas. I love responding to codes, the rapids, all of those. I, I love the thrill of those things on top of having my, uh, patients on the different floors where it's not so adrenaline filled but I get I get that part of it you know what I'm saying so with that being said being a CRNA I feel like it would have allowed me to continue to do that it's like to have that balance and if you're a CRNA or if you know a little bit more correct me if I'm wrong because from my experience and what I've seen when I run down to traumas anesthesia and the anesthesiologist the crna the srna they're running down there they're right there with us it, it's a whole team and i feel more fulfilled on the rt side of things because when you hear about people that crash and they don't make it when you hear about the kids that come into the er and all of these other traumatic things it's like it makes me feel a little bit better when i'm there i'm at the head of the bed i'm doing everything i can and i can look around at all the other faces on my team and we are literally doing everything you possibly can to save this person's life. And even if, unfortunately, everybody don't make it, and even if they don't make it, I have the peace of mind of knowing, I know every last person in this room did every single thing that they could and they worked their damn hardest to save this person, even though it didn't work out because I saw it. I was part of it and I saw it. You get what I'm saying? And again, CRNAs are there. So here's where I'm torn. I was up one day, cause again, I don't know what I wanna do with my life. I don't wanna, I don't wanna choose the wrong thing. So I'm researching CRNAs and stuff again. And I just so happened to be looking through some contracts um, that, you know, CRNA contracts and travel contracts and pay and, you know, um, work stability and stuff like that. Just researching everything. I came across a perfusionist and I was like, okay, what in the world is this? I didn't type anything about this in in Google, anything else. What is it? Why is this popping up? And why do they make so much money? This has to be a doctor, right? And when I started looking more into it, basically a perfusionist, they main they mainly work in the OR, cardio, cardio um, cardiac surgery and stuff like that, like open heart surgery, because they are the people that are either working the ECMO, they are working the heart lung bypass machines and stuff like that. So when you have to have open heart surgery, some of those surgeries, you have to 
stop the heart the heart has to be stopped so the perfusionist is the individual that stops the heart but also make sure that that patient is still being perfused and oxygenated correctly that way they survive the surgery and they come out okay they administer the medications and stuff through this machine and and aesthetics uh blood products anything any thing that you need to go into this patient during the surgery that's what they're responsible for now i can't find a lot i've done oh trust me when i say i've been up y'all i was up a few nights ago into like past three o'clock in the morning researching this because i'm like what is this it sounds like it would be something that i'm interested in but on the flip side it sounds like it would take the thrill out of what i wanted out of my healthcare career but it still sounds so interesting. So I'm doing all this research and I'm like, I can't find much about it. One of the things that's a downside about it so far would be the scheduling. But other than that, I'm okay with it, right? I'm okay with it. CRNAs and perfusionists, they are different. But they still work in that same setting. The setting that I do want to be in. I don't want a very... I don't mind having a predictable job, basically. When you're doing CRNA, you're kind of doing the same thing over and over again. The same with perfusionists, you're just doing the same thing over and over again. So I'm okay with that. I feel like you will get a little bit more thrill and a little bit more differences when it comes to CRNA. And it's kind of like you kind of know what you're doing when it comes to perfusionists. That would be like the difference there is what I'm noticing. But when it came to how you get accepted into perfusionist school, first of all, it's a two year, two to three year program after your bachelor's it's kind of like pa where you don't have to un your undergrad don't have to be in anything specific you can have an undergrad in like social studies or like general studies or whatever as long as you have a bachelor's degree you can apply to this school and get accepted i'm like okay then they said the main people who go or cross over and do well in this program is the number two option well career field was respiratory therapist and i'm like I'm a respiratory therapist and I could literally have my BSRT in like a year. Like what? You don't have to have any time in the, in the ICU or anything like that. If anything, they would just want you to be shadowing a perfusionist to, you know, get, to get a, understand, a better understanding of the job. And now I don't know cause I'm torn because on one end, I just feel like CRNA would be a little bit more thrilling for me if that makes any sense like i would get to see more different things and i would have more options of where i want to work and stuff like that but on the other end it's going to take me way longer to do this though but on the other end i can knock this out and start applying to programs within as little as a year and a half so what do i do what do i do so as far as my educational career, I just don't know, y'all. I don't know what I want to do. Um, getting my B BSRT that is on my list and then shadowing a CRNA and a perfusionist. So as far as my educational goals, those are what I'm trying to do for 2024. Um, my physical goals. Go to the gym more consistently. I have been working on it and I feel like for the past few months, I've been trying to build myself up to that. I haven't necessarily accomplish that just yet but i feel i feel better about going and y'all i'm starting to see gains and i'm happy about that so um going to the gym more consistently is definitely on my physical goals list eating better and healthier and when i say eating better and healthier i mean working on my portion control working on the actual quality of the food that i eat the things that i'm buying like all of those things is going into my eating. I do suffer from an eating disorder and I feel like if I can just put a little bit more effort into how I'm eating and be a little bit more mindful, then I I, I got this, uh, I'm, I got this. Road to recovery, right? <laughs> Drinking more water as well, that's on the list. That's pretty self, bleh, that's pretty self-explanatory. I do not drink enough water. I drink water, but once I run out, or if there's other options, I just drink that. So I've been working on just not bringing any other things in the house if it's not water. So um, yeah, we're drinking them. Oh, flavored water has been my best friend though. Flavored water, my um, those those waters that I those big waters that I get from Walmart, like the 
carbonated waters. Those have been my best friends, so I'm working on it. So my next goal is to invest more into my appearance. And I mean like my nails, my hair, hygiene, apparel, just paying attention to what it is that I am looking like. Cause I will say yes, hygiene, because I, I'm, I'm a clean person. I'm clean guys. I take showers, I take baths, I make sure my body is clean. I use deodorant, blah, blah, blah. But sometimes when I'm feeling extra depressed or sometimes when I'm just feeling extra exhausted, like those times I'll be in a car taking hours, hours long nap like three hour naps in the car like those type of days when i come home i'm just like i know i can't do it like I, I cannot do it even through those spells i plan on taking care of myself actually paying attention to what i'm looking like and stuff like that because when i'm feeling like that and i start to let myself go a little bit like i'm not doing my hair or because i've come on vlogs plenty of times looking busted Please guys understand those are times where I just don't feel like it. But even with those things going on, I plan on making sure I'm making an effort. I like to keep my nails looking nice. So I invested in a actual nail kit that I can do my nails myself. All I could do is go to the nail salon and I get the dip, right? I just get the dip, um, the dip acrylic. Why not just try to figure out how to do that myself. That way I can save money and I'm still able to invest in what I'm looking like. Um, as far as my hair, as y'all can see, I don't do anything on my hair. This is my go-to style because I don't know how to do my hair, but I do plan on starting to do a little bit more with my hair. I think for this year, I wanna start getting more braids because I just, I'm, I'm not there with the weaves and the wigs and stuff yet. I'm just not there yet. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and start with braids because I really do like my hair in braids. So why not do something that I actually like seeing on myself instead of just this all the time. Even though this is fine, this is fun. I, I love this hairstyle, but all the time, like I really be wanting to do something a little bit different. And sometimes having my hair out like this makes it hard for me to wanna keep up with. My apparel, again, just investing more into what it is that I'm looking like. I am a 31-year-old mother and wife. <laughs> a lot of the clothes that I have and that I had, they're just not appropriate for me. And that's my opinion. You guys can dress however you want to dress. That's perfectly fine. Yes, I still like to show a little skin. I still like to be a little sexy because ain't no way in hell I'm in the gym working for this body just to hide it under some blankets. But... I do want to be a little bit more modest in the way I do dress. And so that's the investment that I plan on making with that. And then the last thing is I want to make my living space an oasis. So obviously I have horrible anxiety. I have crippling anxiety some of the times. I, it, it gets really bad. It, it's actually pretty horrible and it, it gets embarrassing. When you're in the middle of the fucking commentary and something triggers you and you're standing there looking at freaking taco seasonings and you all of a sudden have tears running down your eyes because there's way too many people that randomly came into this aisle around you and now people are looking at you like, are you okay? And you're just like, oh no, yeah, it's allergies. It's, it's fine. It's really fine. It's embarrassing. It's very embarrassing. So um, as far as me being in the house, that's one of the reasons why I'm always in the house. I have crippling anxiety. So as far as my space, even though we're renting here, I want to turn this into an oasis. I've started, as you can see, you know, I'm, I'm trying, but I still have a lot of work to do. I have a lot of like just goals and Pinteresty things that I want to do in the house. So. It's a work in progress and cool. I frankly, I'm enjoying it so much. It's so expensive at the same time, but I am loving it so much. I love coming home. I love, I just love it. The last category I'm gonna go over for my 2024 goals is my personal goals. The first one being get pregnant by my husband. <laughs> Y'all, yes me and trey we've been trying so hard um we've been trying and so far nothing and i don't even know how to feel about that it is so disheartening every single time i don't know let me start here we got married back in july and we've been trying since then and here we are in january and nothing not a sign and not anything like i don't I don't know and a part of me is worried like is it me am i like i don't know like 
Am I too old? I, I know I'm 31, but I felt like the first two came so easy and now I'm having so much trouble. It makes no sense at all. And every single time, like using the ovulation trackers and peeing on those little things and using the apps and you think it's something you, you, you around that time you get like the cramps and you're like, oh, maybe this is it. Maybe this is implantation cramping. And then, then it turns into like bleeding. And it's like, oh, okay, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Maybe that's just implantation spotting boom full-blown period and it's just like hmm that sucks now we have to find a way to like come and see each other or get together again so we can try again and it's just it's disappointing seeing that negative pregnancy test every single time is disappointing and then i continue to torture myself even throughout my periods i know this is probably tmi but i still continue to like torture myself throughout my periods still taking pregnancy tests like maybe it's just implantation bleeding maybe it's just implantation bleeding maybe it's just a really heavy implantation period you know bleeding and then you have to get to the point where okay it's been five days it's your period girl you're not pregnant it didn't happen for you this time and so doing that month after month after month this is hard and it's so crazy because it makes me think about some of my friends that cannot get pregnant or have been trying to get pregnant for years it breaks my heart for them because this is hard this is hard and so that's one of the goals that i have um i don't know if it's going to happen <laughs> but uh, we'll see wake up early and actually be productive is number two in my personal goals because i can wake up early but then i'll lay there for like a few hours doing nothing probably on my phone when i could have literally done so much i ha I could have have gotten so much out of the way with that time if i would have just gotten up and started being more productive so that's one of my other goals the the next two so work i'll work on my mental health and work on lowering or discontinuing some of the medications because a lot of the i'm on a lot of medications i am a mentally struggling individual and i do take a lot of medications for anxiety and depression and um my sleeping and just on top of all of the stress that i i i deal with i've created a physical health issues for myself so now i have to take medications for those things i'm talking like stress is a killer guys stress will kill you and over the past few years i've been killing myself slowly so i want to work on my mental health because i want to start getting off of some of the medications and stuff that i'm on and maybe that'll help with you know being able to get pregnant and have a baby and stuff like that so that's another goal that i have is really 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 dedicating a lot of time to work on my mental health um getting outside more even if it's just for a walk again everything feeding into my um my mental health let's see i want to spend more time i'm going to add the two to the next two together which is spend more time out with my family and communicate more with my family so when i say spend time spend more time out with my family yes i mean like trey and the kids and stuff like that me and trey we go out and we do stuff all the time but i can't wait until we implement the kids into all of the things that we do that's our goal that's one of our biggest goals for the year coming up is to like really get out there and do the, the, these things that we love to do so much with the kids but also my family like my aunts and my grandmother my mom my siblings i want to spend more time with them i feel like being in the military i kind of like lost myself and i wasn't in communication with a lot of them the way i would like to and to be completely honest it breaks my heart because a lot of the times i would just avoid it i know that sounds horrible but like my dad for example i love my dad to death like he is such a big part of my life like i love him and it was so many times where he would call and i would just ignore it my mom too my grandmother my kids sometimes i would just ignore it because i'm like i i just i'm tired like i i can't even explain it i can nobody did anything to me it's just mentally i wasn't 
prepared to have a conversation. I don't know if it's because I was just going to trauma dump and there's so much stuff that I need to talk to somebody about and I just don't want to talk to them about it because I don't want them to worry about me, but I just couldn't talk to them. And so I want to get back into um, really being close with my family. I feel like there was so much that I missed out on. So many things that I wish I could have been present for that I wasn't able to be present for. And I just have, I feel like I just have a lot of time to make up for. And not even necessarily for them, but for myself. Like I am a very family friend, community oriented person. And not having that for the past, I don't know how long has been just eating me away inside and so that's another thing i just want to reconnect with my family and i just cannot wait i can't wait to be going home a little bit more often and the last one here is grow my relationship with god and get more into my spirituality and that's another thing that i've been working on as well is really trying to understand it the messages um the way he communicates with me and the things that he wants me to do, whatever trail that or or track he wants me to be on and just understanding my purpose and what it is that I'm supposed to be doing in God's view, in God's eye, the way he wants me to do these things. And so that's why it's so hard and I plan on getting a little bit more into my spirituality and building my relationship with him in hopes that the signs and the messages and the things that he wants me to do becomes a little bit more clear because as of right now, I don't understand it. And so it leaves me stuck a little bit because I don't know which way to go. Like, what are you telling me to do? Are, is, this what, is, is this what you're telling me to do? Or is this a lesson? Or is this, a, wh what is it? So yes, that is my 2024 goal list. I know this video was so long. It definitely, I didn't mean for it to be this long, guys. I'm sorry. It was supposed to have been something real short, cute, and to the point, but here we are. Um, That's it. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Please help me reach that 10,000 subscriber goal by the end of 2024. And I wish you guys absolutely nothing but the best for this year. I feel like a lot of us have really taken a beating these past few years. And this is the year. This is the year. Like me and my husband said, y'all know when people be saying, new year, new me. This is my year. I'm about to blah, blah, blah. I'm about to take over. No, that's not us, right? This is our foundational year. This is the year where we just, we brushing it off. Like we just got out of a fight, right? We just got out of something crazy. So we over here like, okay, you okay? You, you all right? You okay? Okay. Everybody good? Okay, all right. All right, let's start picking this mess up. Let's let's let's, let's go ahead and straighten up a little bit and we, <laughs> we just going we just going go ahead and strain it on up a little bit and pick it pick everything back up. Go ahead and clean your face off. Clean, clean, yeah, you looking a little clean just clean it up a little bit. Clean your face off a little bit. You you'll be just dust it off. That's this year for us, right? So that's where we at. Crazy. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.